Okay, anyone want to volunteer an answer? Not quite. Six. Not quite. Um, this is a common one that people make a mistake on. You, you're just getting started at counting, so you know I, I, I'm sure I made the same mistake. Um, okay, so walk me through it. For the first digit, which says it should be odd, how many positions are there? Three possible uh, odd digits. Okay. Um, what about the second one? Okay, that's right. And how many... Uh, Digits can go there. Five? Why do you say four, Jenny? So the next one must be an even one. So because it's otherwise I could choose the odd digit. If I allow the odd digit to be chosen, it would start with three odd numbers. Right? It may or may not. I know some of you are going to go, well, it doesn't have to. But it still has the possibility. You're counting extra combinations that aren't part of this problem. So if it must start with exactly two, that means we must stop and say, you must pick an even number here. At this point, I can pick anything I want. So, four, three, two. Don't worry, Jenny, I, I make more mistakes than you, I'm sure, in a given day. So there are actually 576 possible numbers. Okay? All right, moving on. Uh, no, because once I've used, at this point, I've used three of the seven. There's only four left. So any four you want, but then three, two, one. Okay. Okay, so let's, uh, here's another common one. Um, let me move it up to the top, I guess. So how many arrangements of the word active are there if C and E must be together? Anybody want to go back to calculus now? No. No? Okay. Still no. Okay, it's not so bad. Um, and again, like I said, it's more about how you think of the problem, how you use your sort of common sense to do it. So even when we work out a technique here, um, we're going to have to uh, see that common sense come out. Yeah, I think you do. Most people have some common sense. Most people. Certain teenage boys lack a lot of common sense, but... <laughs> okay. So let's regroup here. Um, how many arrangements of the word active are there if C and E must be together? Okay. Um, I don't know. I haven't, can't remember. But let's think about uh, how many objects are there? Five. No, six. six. Is there six objects here? Or are Five. there? Five. If C and E is one object. Yeah, that's a good way to think of this problem, right? C and E must stay together. So there aren't really six objects anymore. There's now actually five. So basically, um, you invent a new letter that looks like this. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. You don't. There but is you. Like that. Is there? No, yeah, in calculus, there's a letter, there's a letter like that. Yeah. But not anymore. That's the le that's the word that shall not be spoken in this class anymore. I know. Let's just put it behind us. Let's move on. <laughs> that's correct. But anyway. Okay. So it's C E is one letter now. Okay. So basically, we're gonna think of this as one, two, three, four, five objects. So how many ways can I arrange five objects? Well, we know that we can arrange them, five. yes, by five ways, which is 120. But this is a very special letter, this new one that we've created, because C and E can be together in two different ways. So watch this. Are you watching? Lisa and Mark stand up. Lisa, Lisa and Mark are a group. Lisa and Mark are still a group, but now they're in different sides. So you can go back to the way you were. There's actually two possible arrangements inside the group. So I have to multiply it by 
the number of arrangements inside, so two factorial. So there'd actually be 240 for my answer. Okay, so that's the strategy we're going to use here, is we want to treat objects that are together as one. We're going to say that because they're stuck together, that is one object now. <laughs> then what we want to do is figure out how many internal arrangements we can make. That's how much they can move within their group. So we'll practice this, but before we do, um, let's find a strategy for objects apart. Can anyone come up with a strategy for objects apart? I think Andrew probably can. <coughs> you don't put them together, thank you. Um, can we figure out a way to count objects that are um, must remain apart? so direct, trying to find a direct route to the problem. You pick that out. How can we do this indirectly? Excellent. Okay, so let's find all, and we're going to remove the together. Because that basically says I'm going to be left with just the objects that are apart. Okay? So you can count all of them, and then remove what was together, so there's no possible combination left when they would be beside each other or together. Okay, so let's try it and see what it actually looks like here. How many ways can three math books, five chemistry, and seven physics books be arranged on a shelf? Whose library is that? Really, right? Well, Seriously. Well, <laughs> no, I have more. No, you know what? You all laugh, but in university, you'll have all these glorious textbooks that you have nothing to do with them anymore, and they'll be sitting on a shelf like this someday. Yeah, you can sell them. <laughs> but then it'll break your heart that you paid $200 for it and someone will give you 20 Okay. How many, objects do I, how many objects do I have here in this configuration? How many objects? Yeah, you're on the right track. I think uh, maybe I heard you wrong then. But this is the number. It can either be math, physics, or uh, chemistry. It could be one of those three. So three possible ways they could be arranged on the shelf. Then inside each of them, there's chemistry, um, physics, and math. Yeah. That's what I said. Okay. So my apologies. You were right. <laughs> okay. So I end up with, uh, let's just see what we have here. Okay, so it looks like I now have a total of 21,772,800 possible things that to put on your shelf. So on a rainy day someday when you're bored, you, you know, this will keep you occupied for a while. <laughs> okay, so last question. Johnny and Billy fight when they sit together. If there are 11 people in their daycare, how many ways can they line up for a photo so that Johnny and Billy must remain apart? Yeah, it's going to be all of the arrangements. So all arrangements, if we want to find all, it's going to be 11 factorial. Then we need to figure out how many if they're together and remove it. We don't want this to happen, so we're going to take it away from all possibilities. So how many ways are they sitting together? Well, there are no longer 11 people in the daycare. How many are there now? There's a Bajani. <laughs> Ten, yes. So there's ten now, and Bajani can move himself to be two factorial. Okay. So that means if I want to know a part, I'm, is that like a swear word in another language? Did I? Okay. So there's eleven factorial minus ten factorial times two means there's still a lot of pictures that they can take. So there, anyways, the photographer won't get bored. There's a lot of ways to do that still. 